Hanging a prop on an engine of the B-17 isn't quite like hanging a picture. But like a lot of other things, it's easy when you know how. One good trick is to get the prop set up on a box so it'll be off the ground and easy to get at for cleaning. Sand or grit in the mechanism of the prop hub can cause serious damage. Mel, the crew chief, gives the prop hub a careful inspection and a thorough cleaning before installing it. Herb and Chuck carry in the prop dome and the boys go to work. Not only the hub, but the prop dome gets a spray bath. Atta boy, Chuck. Cover up that open end of the dome. I'll give these various smaller parts the innards of cleaning, too. Give me the bronze cone, Herb. I'll give it a bath while I'm at it. And also, these two half rings that make up the front cone. Such cleaning brings these parts out into the open, where they can be inspected for any signs of damage or wear. Defective parts are replaced. In hoisting the prop, Mel uses woven slings so they won't scratch the blade surfaces as metal cables or chains are apt to do. Suitable slings can also be arranged with rope. Hot goes up on the hoist to keep the blades from banging around when the hoist is moved. Okay, fellas, truck on in. Take her easy, fellas. We won't hang it right now. Got to lay the foundation first. The cloth and metal cap protecting the shaft threads has to come off. A condemned prop spider comes in handy in turning the shaft. Now for the extension bar. Now give me some help so we can turn the engine until the bar is straight to the ground. That's good. The shaft is turned so that its closed spline is down, matching the position of the open spline in the hub of the prop as it hangs from the hoist. Mel cleans the shaft carefully, and also the heavy bronze cone, which is the first thing that goes onto the shaft. The split cone contracts and grips the shaft tightly when the prop is pushed back against it, making a firm foundation for the whole prop assembly. Mel is careful not to get oil in the cone as he lubricates the shaft. He slips a metal guard over the thread so they won't be damaged when the prop goes on later. Here's a closer view of it. Riding the hoist, Ott lines up the prop and the shaft. Okay, Chuck, pull her up. Easy. And Ott does a little peeking to see that everything is all right. Then, the open spline on the prop hub is carefully pushed over the closed spline on the shaft. It doesn't pay to rush things, though. Before the prop is seated, the anti-icer sprayer nozzle on the engine is checked. The slinger ring on the prop just clears this nozzle. If it isn't adjusted properly, it can get curled up like a pretzel. Packing rings, Herb. These three rings are the first necessity around the shaft to prevent oil leakage. The first ring is flat. The second is a fiber with a deep V-shaped groove on the front, into which fits this third ring made of metal and also grooved. When it's installed, it spreads, widening the fiber ring to form a tight seal and keep the oil where it belongs. Give me the retaining nut, Ott. This is the mainstay of the whole prop assembly. I coat it with thread lubricant because it has to go in without any damage to its threads. The front cone, consisting of these two sections, attached to the retaining nut. I checked to make sure the serial numbers on the two halves are identical. The cone was originally made in one piece, and the two parts, therefore, must make perfectly. Herb, turn the blades, will you? So the smooth side of the blade gears faces out. Otherwise, the retaining nut and cone can't bypass the gears. I put this retaining nut on finger tight for the time being. That's enough to keep the prop on. Ott, you can take off the slings. The hoist is no longer needed. The boys move out the hoist, and Ott replaces the ladders with a work stand.
Up goes Mel to get ready for the next item, the transfer plate and its copper gaskets. These gaskets stay right in the engine shaft as a rule. Mel fishes them out for a check of their condition. The gaskets have a tendency to become stiff and brittle with use. If they're soft and can be bent easily, they're okay. The groove side of the transfer plate goes to the rear, the smooth side to the front. Now to install the oil distributor valve. First, a little oil on its threads before being turned into the shaft. I started by hand, then finished the job with this lightweight distributor valve housing wrench. Whenever possible, I use the heavy duty type wrench for this job, if available. With the extension bar, Ott uses about 100 pounds of pressure, and I tap the wrench with a light hammer. The valve should line up with one of its locking slots directly under the hole in the engine shaft. I take no chances and line it up visually. If it doesn't line up, it can't be backed off. In this case, it would either be replaced or lapped in. It's okay. Now for the lightweight propeller retaining nut wrench to completely tighten the nut. A heavy duty wrench should be used if handy. This wasn't done earlier because the valve is hard to install when the nut is tight. Odd exerts about 180 pounds on the extension bar and I help with some hammer taps on the wrench. The finishing touch is the powerful snap ring which locks the retaining nut, the valve, and the engine shaft together. The nipple is inserted into all three parts and then I spring the trailing end into the retaining nut on the right hand side of the nipple. One more ring, the steel puller ring. It fits into a slot on the inner side of the hub to make the parts a unit. Well, that completes the inside job. Now to install the dome. Mel turns all three blades to full feathered position, hard against the stops. Ott brings in the dome for checking before installation. Here you are, Sarge. Thanks, Ott. Now, to make sure the two stop rings, which control high and low pitch of the propeller blades, are set at the proper degree markings. I gotta get the upper ring, controlling high pitch, off. Then I can check the lower ring. The proper setting for the blades at low pitch is 20 degrees. The arrow on the lower ring should point exactly at the 20 degree mark on the dome circumference. This one points at the 20 degree mark. So it's okay. The upper ring, controlling the angle of the prop blades at high pitch, should be set for 88 degrees. I reinstall it that way. There can't be more than two or three thousandths of an inch difference between the preload figure on the hub, let's see, this hub reads 432 thousandths, and the dome, which reads 454 about 20 thousandths too many. The difference is adjusted with brass shim, each five thousandths in thickness. Five, 10, 15, 20. Now the preload difference is only two thousandths instead of 22. I put this rubber seal ring on securely so no oil will spew out. The dome handle makes for a sure grip. Before Mel puts on the dome, he lubricates the three rings at the front of the oil distributor valve. Then he turns the ring so their slots aren't lined up with one another. Now the dome can be installed. Are you all set, Mel? No, I have to check and double check a few things first. There's an arrow on the prop hub right there to show the position the dome's in when seated. I turn the dome so the matching arrow on it will be over the arrow on the hub when I slip the dome on. There it is. And on she goes. Putting arrow on arrow gets it right. I also saw to it that the rotating cam in the dome was turned to the high angle position before installing. With the dome tightened, we can now be sure the gears have meshed. Turn the blade back to low pitch. 
there's an index line at the base of each blade. I line it up with a 20 degree mark on the hub. Mel takes no chances. He checks all three blades to see that they're lined up right. Well, the dome's on right, so it gets a final tightening with the retaining nut wrench and Ott bears down on the extension bar. Then Mel lines up the retaining nut so the lock nut screw can be inserted into one of the flanges to button it up. The screw is safe tied with a loop of safety wire that runs through it and around the flange. Bit of twisting, a bit of cutting, a bit of bending, and that leaves just the dome lug to be installed. Mel examines the washer. He knows how important the gasket and washer on this dome plug really are. He tightens the plug, safeties it with a snap ring, and, well, that's that. The prop is hung, ready for its first test and a check of its pitch controls from the cockpit whenever the engine gives it a whirl.